motion in one dimension takes place only in one axis and we call this usually x okay but before that we have to uh, get some uh, some definitions on some physical quantities the first one is position okay before I define these quantities let me uh, say something which is very important in physics without starting analyzing uh, anything first you have to set up your coordinate system okay the coordinate system in in this chapter is only a straight line and we usually call this as x-axis it is the position okay it shows the position the numbers on this line are the position uh, information with respect to origin once you draw your line your axis you have to pick up a origin okay without specifying your origin you cannot measure distances you cannot measure position of an object whatever so we have to set up first uh, an origin or the zero position what we call and what we do next is we measure all the position and displacement and everything with respect to this origin okay this is a very special point and what is next what is the position of an object position of an object on this line is nothing but for example for this boy to be here xi it is nothing but it's the distance from this point to the origin that's it this is the position and at some other time for example this boy can move to another place its new position is this one okay we usually call if you uh, measure two positions the first measurement usually called the initial position and it is uh, written as x sub i x initial it means and we usually label the final position as x final xf <coughs> once you set up your coordinate system your coordinate system like this for example the right direction shows the increasing x direction the all the position values in this right direction in this direction is increasing okay all the values in the other direction is decreasing and we call this direction as the negative x-axis direction so being positive or negative shows you the direction okay direction is important if you say something like plus etc etc then it means okay it's in the uh, direction to the right if it is minus it's in the direction to the left so this is the position and what about the distance let me explain the distance in 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 this example you see a, a one street we have uh, three buildings in this street one is uh, your house let's say and the other is friend's house and the other is a grocery grocery store for example if you start your motion on this line because since everything is on the same line the basically the motion on this line is a one dimensional motion if you start from your house and go to grocery store then you take a distance of 4.3 miles right if you come back to your house your final position will be the same as your initial position right because you start from your horse house and your initial position is with respect to this your friend's house is nothing but 2.1 miles right but if you go and come back the distance you travel is just twice of 4.3 miles right so if you go and come back you travel a distance of 8.6 miles okay even if you end up at the same point after uh, your motion your distance is not zero okay so distance is a total travel length but the displacement is something else although in physics distance and the displacement have 
the same unit. The displacement has the unit of length, and also the displacement has the, the dis, uh, distance has the unit, uh, unit of length. Okay, both distance and displacement have the same units, but the, the displacement is defined as the difference between your final position and initial position. In the previous example, if you start from your house, go to grocers, grocery store, and come back again, the same point, same uh, place, uh, your house. What is your displacement? Zero, because you end up wherever you start. You end up at the same position. So the difference between these same positions is zero. But what about the distance? It's the same thing. It's the same motion, but the distance is not zero. Distance is 8.6 miles. So that's the difference you have to be careful about. And it, the distance is usually shown as delta x. And in SI unit system, since we, uh, as I uh, said in my first lecture, in, in, in this course, we use SI unit system and all the length measurements are done in meters, all the time measurements are done in seconds, and all the uh, mass measurements are done in kilograms. Okay. So there are examples here. Uh, you have uh, this car on top, and uh, its initial position is, is A, and the final position is B, so you just record these uh, positions, XA is, is 30 meters from this uh, origin, and X final is uh, 52 meters, it goes in the positive X direction, right, in the positive X direction. What is this displacement? It's just the difference, 52 minus 30 meters, it's just 22 meters. And also, its, its distance is the same in this case. Because it goes in the same direction without uh, changing its direction anyway. So distance and the, the, and the displacement in this case is the same. In the next one here, the car uh, starts its motion at C, okay? Its initial position here. And it is around uh, this 40, it is 38 meters and it goes in the negative x direction okay it goes in the negative x direction and end up at minus 53 so its displacement is minus 53 minus 38 minus 91 meters so displacement can be negative okay displacement can be negative but the distance can never be negative okay Distance is always positive. It can be a zero or positive. <clears throat> so this was the motion of an object on, on a line, and we don't have any specific information uh, during the motion. At what time uh, the object was where, we don't know. But we can tell this by using some graphs, x versus t graph. Okay. That's the graph that I have shown you in, in previous lectures to draw a graph. In X versus T graphs, you have all the information about the motion of an object. You have its position information, you have its speed, velocity, instantaneous velocity, its acceleration, its average acceleration, instantaneous acceleration, we will see these. You get all of the information from position versus time graph, okay? So, uh, you should learn how to read the uh, position versus time graphs, and you will, uh, I will show it to you here. Remember, in the, in the previous uh, example, uh, we have analyzed the uh, position of this car at some points, at A, B, C, D, E, F, and from A to B, when the car moves from A to B at a certain time, okay? On this, we only have the position information. We don't have any time information. But on these graphs, we also have time measurements, okay? We have also time information. It goes from A to B in 10 seconds, okay? You can read. And here, 
if you form a right triangle, if you connect these two points A and B by a straight line and form a right triangle, this perpendicular side of this triangle, the length of the perpendicular side, will be the displacement. Okay, And this uh, horizontal side is just the total time duration from going point A to B. <clears throat> so you can do this, uh, uh, similar things. Uh, well, you can draw a line from B to D, a straight line. In that case, the vertical uh, length will show you the position, uh, displacement between B and D. And similarly, you will have the information of how this, uh, how long this uh, motion going from B to B takes in time. So, uh, be careful, very careful uh, when uh, answering the questions in your quizzes. Displacement and the distance are not the same. They are different things. Displacement can be negative quantity and distance is always positive. So be careful on this. Displacement can be zero, negative, positive, but distance can only be zero or positive. So the next thing in physics is well, we know what the position and displacement is, and we can measure time. We can talk about the speed. Okay, We can talk about the speed of an object. It means information about the motion of the object, how long it takes, at what time. Okay, It is just a definition, the path length or distance divided by the total time, elapsed time. And it's shown as... Uh, this V average and it's equal to in, in symbolically we usually uh, write D, X, Y, Z as in, instead of uh, position or dis uh, distances and T as uh, uh, time measurements D divided by T is a symbolic uh, definition of the speed average speed and just like distance speed is always a positive quantity. Speed cannot be negative. In your car, the speedometer is always showing you a positive quantity, right? It never shows you the direction. It never shows you minus values. So the speedometer is just a measure of speed in your car. But the velocity is different. So this is also the difference between uh, velocity and speed. The average velocity is defined as the displacement delta x divided by total time, delta t. And we know displacement to measure the displacement, we need exactly two points, the initial point and the final point. And we already know what the displacement is. If you divide this by the time values, the time uh, of the object at xf and the time of the object at xi and take the difference, you have a time uh, duration, total time and this gives you the average velocity and what is the uh, unit of the average velocity in, in SI unit system since we are measuring the distances in, in meters and uh, time and in seconds the Unit for V is meter per second. Let me make a clear distinction between the speed and uh, average velocity or speed and velocity by this example. You may have an object going from point P to Q either on this line, straight line, the orange line, or on this blue line, the curved line, the curve. So the Q will be your final position, XF, and the uh, XI, P will be XI in, in your uh, initial position. In which case, the speed or the velocity is larger. If the object ends up at these points at the same time. If it goes from P to Q on this uh, 
orange line, let's call this V uh, average speed 1, or if it goes on this blue line, average speed 2, which one is larger? Speed 2 or 2? Why? Longer distance, exactly. As I said, uh, the object moves from P to Q at the same time, in both cases. But we know that this blue line has, has a larger distance, right? And the orange line is a smaller distance. But this is true for speed. What about the average velocity between these two points? Which one is larger? Orange is larger. Why? No less time. Both times are the same. Well, distance, distance is only for speed, but we only take care of displacements in in average velocity. So, since the final and initial positions are the same for both cases, so either you go on the blue curve or on the orange line. The initial and final position is the same. So there is nothing different uh, between these two uh, paths. Even if it goes with the orange path or the blue path, the average velocities are the same. Okay? All right. <coughs> and next, uh, I want to t tell about the equation of a straight line before I talk about the motion at a constant velocity. But since you already know, what the slope of a line is, I just omit this part. And like uh, velocities, the slope of a straight line can be either positive or negative. Okay, for example, the, this red line has this equation y x y is equal to one half x plus two. It has a positive slope. What is the slope of the red line? One over two. It's it's point five. It's already there, right? It, it's the coefficient in front of x. It's just a slope. And for blue line, the slope is minus 1. Uh, it uh, leans toward left. If it leans toward left, it's, it has a negative slope. If it leans toward right, it has a positive slope. This is important on describing the average uh, velocity, uh, the, the motion in one dimension, which has constant velocity. Okay. The motion in one dimension, which has a constant velocity, is represented by a straight line on x versus t. Whenever you see x versus t as a straight line of an object, you can immediately tell that this object is going with a constant velocity. Okay? Because it takes equal amount of uh, distances in equal amount of time. So, the slope is the same everywhere, right? The slope is the same at all points in this line. So we have a constant velocity for a straight line. For example, uh, during the first 10 seconds, how long the object moves? During the first 10 seconds, what's the distance the object moves? 20 meters, you can read, right? You can read from the graph that during the during the next 10 next 10 seconds, how long it travels? Again 20. During the next 10 seconds, again it moves 20. So it's moving on a regular basis in equal amount of time. So it has a constant constant velocity. Okay, but of course you may have some x versus t curves, not, not the straight lines. As you see, an object is moving on this, in this graph by this curve, okay? Obviously, it changes its average velocity, right? It changes its speed, right? Because in, in one portion of time, it moves in the uh, positive x direction, and somewhere here, it stops momentarily, and it goes back, right? You can read this, right? Because from this point toward the right, it moves in the negative x direction, right? Uh, this is also the same. 
but still you can calculate the average velocity for these kind of curves not straight lines for example if you are asked to find the average velocity between points A and B on the first graph in here and here well object takes some distance it moves what is its average velocity what you do is just connect these two endpoints A and B form a right triangle and this length of the this vertical side divided by the length of the a horizontal side delta x divided by delta t will give you the average velocity of the object between a and b okay not between any other points this is the average velocity between a and b only if you are curious about the average velocity between c and d then it's another another story so in this case you will again draw a straight line between C and D and form a right triangle and again you will measure these lengths the vertical and the horizontal lengths divide them by to find uh, the average velocity between C and D only so to you can get the average velocity information for any any two points on x versus time graphs as I said already before you can get any information about the motion of the object at between any points <clears throat> but uh, be careful on the second uh, average velocity the second average velocity is negative and you can tell by this triangle right in this triangle the vertical length stays below the horizontal line okay this the horizontal uh, length it it locates below that but in here this length is uh, located uh, above this horizontal line okay so from this also you can tell the average velocity without calculating it is minus in here well sometimes we don't care about the average velocity we need immediately what is the velocity at any uh, immediate time at any time uh, you may want to get the information about about the velocity of the object for a certain specific time not between any two points okay for example your car you're going in your car and you you read the speedometer the speedometer uh, shows you instantaneous speed or instantaneous velocity okay because during the motion this speed or velocity is changing all the time but at any specific time you can get the instantaneous velocity mathematically the instantaneous velocity is defined by the limiting ra limiting of this ratio remember the average velocity was only delta x divided by delta t but the instantaneous velocity is the limit of this ratio when delta t goes to zero okay this is the mathematical uh, definition and i will explain to you what uh, the geometrical description of uh, instantaneous velocity suppose you have this position versus time curve okay is blue curve the object moves with a changing velocity at any point it has different velocity right because it's a curve if it were a straight line I would say its speed all its speed and velocity is was all the time constant it's, it's the same speed or velocity but since this is not a straight line it's a curve I can tell that at every point in time the object changes its speed so you may be asked to give the information of a, about about this object information of its instantaneous velocity right at time t is equal to one second okay what is its velocity instantaneous velocity at this time so it corresponds to this point on the curve but i can tell i can get an 
an assumption to find the instantaneous uh, velocity at this point, I can take any two points before this point and after this point and connect these two points and calculate the slope to find the average velocity. Okay? Well, I can say that this average velocity will be close to the instantaneous velocity in here. But I can pick up these two points, not the initial and this final point, but the points which are closer to this point on this curve. This one and this one. I can get this, uh, form this uh, straight line again, calculate the uh, slope to find the average velocity between these two points. But I can do better. I can make closer and closer to this point by picking up uh, closer and closer points. If you go this picking up two points on this curve closer and closer to the point in question, at the end what you do is you draw a tangent line right at this point at time t is equal to 1 to the curve. Okay? And this is a tangent line because it only touches at one point to the curve. Right? This is the definition of a tangent line. Tangent line is a straight line and it only touches to any curve at one point only. If you make this line at the point in question and then if you calculate the slope of this line the slope of this line will be the instantaneous velocity at this point okay kim var orada bazılarınız sürekli oraya bakıyoruz ama işte Evet, anladınız mı arkadaşlar burayı? Ha? Evet, şimdi dedik ki e, Averaj hız ya da ortalama hız için mutlaka iki nokta bulmanız lazım. For those of you who don't understand Turkish, I'm repeating the same things, okay? So you don't miss anything. E, ortalama hız için iki nokta mutlaka almam lazım. Ama anlık hız için tek nokta. Neden? Çünkü tek bir anda. Yani zaten tanımı o. Tek bir anda e, anlık hızı bulmak istiyorum. Yapacağım tek şey e, pozisyon zaman köründe hangi noktada anlık hızı bulmak istiyorsam o noktaya gidiyorum. O noktaya teğet bir çizgi ama düz bir çizgi. Teğet bir çizgi çiziyorum ve o çizginin eğimini hesaplıyorum. Bu kadar. So, with this definition making clear, I can ask you these questions. At wha what point, you can guess, you can see, read the graph, at what point the instantaneous velocity is zero? On this curve, at what time, nearly, at what time the object stops? Two point five. Okay, let's check. Let's check. At two point five in time, I want to mark this on the curve. Okay, this point. If I draw a tangent line at this point, let's do it with uh, by a straight line. Okay. Okay, so this is the tangent line almost. Well, it's a little le uh, leaning toward left, okay, but it's almost zero, right? The slope is almost zero because it's almost parallel, but it's not exactly parallel. So if I move a little further, like like this point, let me, this point, and if I draw a 
tangent line, then that line is parallel. So a little further away from 2.5 seconds, this object stops momentarily because its instantaneous velocity is zero. Why? Because the tangent line has a zero slope at this point. There's another point, right? Which has a zero uh, instantaneous velocity. It is somewhere here. I think it is somewhere here. And it is close to 1.5 seconds. And at what time interval, at which time interval, at which uh, two points in time, between which two points in time, this object has a negative velocity? Yes. It has a negative velocity. Positive velocity. But I'm asking negative velocity. Uh, we, during which interval? During which interval of time? Be hey, okay. Uh, your friend says between time one point, almost nearly. 1.5 seconds and 2.5 seconds, the object is moving with a negative velocity. Well, if you observe all possible tangent lines between these two points, okay, in time. Well, here, here, all of them almost uh, leaning toward uh, left. So if it's leaning toward left, it has a negative slope, then between these two points in time, the object has negative velocity, okay? So, you get the idea of reading these x versus t graphs uh, and instantaneous velocities uh, by just making tangent lines and observing whether they have a positive slope or negative slope. These kind of questions you will uh, see in your quizzes, so it's important for you to understand this part. So this was the uh, geometrical uh, definition of instantaneous velocity in, in one dimension, but you will see, even if we analyze the motion in, in more than one dimension, in two dimension, in three dimension, the concept is the same. And you will have some graphs of position versus time, both in X and Y and Z, and these graphs will give you the information about the instantaneous velocity, the average velocity, and everything, even uh, the acceleration. Okay, do you have any questions so far? So our next uh, physical quantity is acceleration. Just like the velocity is a change of position in time, the acceleration can be defined as a change in velocity in time, okay? If, it, if you measure the change of the position of an object in time, what you're measuring is actually its velocity. But if you're measuring the change in velocity, not position, this corresponds to acceleration. So the acceleration can be defined as the change of the velocity of an object in time. So again, the average for calculating the average acceleration, you need two uh, velocity information. One is final velocity and the other is initial velocity. Two velocity information because you're measuring the change in velocity, right? If you don't have these velocities, then you have nothing. Uh, once you get these uh, velocities, make a difference and divide it by the total time, what you find is the average acceleration of the object. So the average acceleration is V final minus V initial divided by the total time. If you release an object at your hand from rest, it will fall down, right? It will fall down and it moves with a constant velocity? No. 
Its velocity is changing, right? Its velocity is changing or increasing, let's say, in a regular way, in a regular fashion. In fact, its velocity is changing at a constant acceleration, we can say. And this specific type of acceleration about the motion of the objects on the surface of the Earth is called the gravitational acceleration. Okay? So the gravitational acceleration is when you throw an object up in the air and observe its change of speed or its, its change in the velocity of the object. This change is always fixed. It's constant and this change has a constant acceleration of gravitational acceleration which is 9.81 meter per second. This is the acceleration of Earth on objects moving on the surface of the Earth. For example, there are some typical acceleration values in here. A typical elevator has an acceleration of 3 meter per second square. Uh, in bungee jumpings, the acceleration is typically 30 meter per second square. It means 3G, almost 3G, right? And the combat pilots, air pilots, are uh, experiencing 10G accelerations in the uh, fighter planes. Okay, Fighter planes move very uh, fast and they move their direction very fast. During this change of speed or velocity, of course they will experience some acceleration. And the, these acceleration values are as high as 10G. So the, a pilot can feel 10 times its weight on himself when making a sharp turn. Uh, so if, if you're going to be pilot, you have to be a very uh, strong against high accelerations. Okay, if you shot a rifle gun, of course your bullet will accelerate from zero speed to its final speed and the typical value is almost here 4.4 times 10 to the 5 meter per second square. It's very high. Okay. So there is a example and you you see a ship going from one island to another and it is increasing its speed from uh, 7.4 meter per second to 7.3 meter per second. Well, you cannot tell it's increasing its speed but it's decreasing its speed, right? So in this case, its acceleration will be negative. The difference between these velocities is 0 0.1 meter per second. And if it happens in, let's say, 12.3 seconds, then 0 0.1 divided by 12.3 seconds is the average acceleration. So you can calculate. These are easy questions. I'm leaving it to you uh, to find the answer. Okay, once uh, we know what the average acceleration is, the next is what is the instantaneous acceleration. Sorry. So just like, as in the case of finding instantaneous velocity, on V versus time graph, not X versus time graph, okay? We are now dealing with V versus time graph. If you have this trajectory, the motion of object, this green line, you see its velocity is changing all the time because it's a curve and it has different velocities at different points in time. Then you may be asked to find, let's say, what is the average uh, acceleration between time t1 and t2. Okay? Just like in the case of position versus time graph you draw you were drawing straight lines by connecting these two points in here also you will draw you will connect these two points in question t1 and t2 on the curve form a straight line and calculate the slope of this line this will give you the average acceleration between time t1 and t2 
And if you want to calculate the average acceleration between T2 and T3, you do the same. Just form a straight line and calculate the slope. But sometimes, just like in the case of instantaneous velocity, you may be asked to find the instantaneous acceleration of the object at a specific time. Let's uh, calculate the instantaneous acceleration in this picture at time t is equal to 3. At t3, what you do is you just draw a tangent line to the curve and calculate the slope. If you calculate the slope, then this will give you the instantaneous acceleration right at this point, at time t is equal to t3. So you can tell me uh, at what duration of what intervals of time this object is increasing its speed or decreasing its speed or the speed is, the, is not changing. What happens between time T1 and T2? Is the object increasing its speed or velocity? It is obviously increasing because if you go in time, in the positive time direction, the object changes its speed in the positive v direction. So it's increasing. After which time the object is decreasing its velocity? Obviously, after time t3, the object moves in the negative v direction. Right? It moves in the, uh, sorry, in the x, v axis, it moves down after time t3. So it's decreasing its velocity. So you can uh, read the v versus time graph like this uh, to get some uh, information about its acceleration. Well, there is one, one term uh, which may be uh, confusing for you we have acceleration and we have deceleration okay what is deceleration let me explain it to you uh, these four pictures of a car moving right and left a car is moving in the first picture a in the positive x direction so obviously it has a positive uh, velocity. The direction of this uh, green line, it shows the direction of the, uh, uh, its velocity. But it has also some acceleration because we have an arrow A toward right. So you can say that this car, blue car, is increasing its speed, right? It is accelerating. It is accelerating in the positive extraction. And look at the next. B. The car is still moving toward right. It's moving in the positive extraction because the direction of its velocity vector is toward right. But it has an acceleration vector or the direction of the acceleration in the opposite direction. It shows the negative x-axis. If the direction of the acceleration and the direction of the velocity are opposite to each other, then in that case, the car is decreasing its velocity or it is decreasing its speed. Okay? In this case, we say the car is decelerating. Okay? It's not accelerating but it's decelerating. Next, on C, you see again the same car. This time it's moving in the negative x direction. Does it have a positive speed or negative speed? Speed cannot be negative. Okay. It has a negative velocity, but it has a positive speed. Okay. Speed can never be negative. But the acceleration is toward uh, the positive x direction. Is the car 
increasing its speed or decreasing its speed? Increasing? Who says increasing? But I'm talking about the speed, not the velocity. Speed is decreasing. Who says the speed is increasing? Why? You see, the acceleration and the direction of the velocity are opposite to each other. So the car is decreasing its velocity. Also, it is decreasing its speed. Okay? And it is decelerating. What about the last one? Increasing, increasing what? Speed. Speed, S speed is increasing. What about the velocity? Is the velocity increasing or decreasing? Who says increasing? It increases its uh, velocity. Who says the velocity is decreasing? So, nobody have any idea? But obviously, obviously, it, it, it is changing its velocity, right? Because it has an acceleration. If, if there is an acceleration, it changes its velocity. But it's going faster and faster in the negative x direction. So it is decreasing its velocity. Because at one time, let's say, if its velocity is, let's say, minus one meter per second, at a later time, it has a velocity of two meter per second, minus two meter per second. If you are talking in, in the language of math, <coughs> minus five or minus two is less than minus one. So it is decreasing its velocity, but it is increasing its speed, okay? And again, it is accelerating. In the last picture, in D, the car is not decelerating, but it is accelerating because both this velocity and the acceleration is in the same direction. So I will stop here for today. And I think on Thursday, we have a, a lecture, one lecture R, and we don't have lab. So we'll meet on Thursday.